Mangrove forests are composed of halophytes, plants that are adapted to grow in salt water. There are about 80 species worldwide, but only 12 reside in the Americas. Mangrove forests have plenty to offer. They provide an estimated $1.6 billion in ecosystem services worldwide by protecting and stabilizing shorelines, providing habitat for important marine organisms, and sequestering carbon. These are some of the reasons I care about mangroves and why I am studying how multiple factors interact to drive the loss of mangroves in the Bahamas. Despite the important services mangroves provide, they are lost at a rate of 1-2% to per year. Many factors, both human and natural, are responsible for mangrove loss. Human activities such as development and aquaculture often result in the direct destruction of mangroves. Likewise, natural events such as hurricanes also result in direct destruction of mangroves. Although direct destruction is a common cause of mangrove loss, perhaps more common is the change in environmental conditions triggered by a storm event or development. These changes are often what lead to a mangrove forest loss. In the Bahamas, I am studying how factors such as herbivory, disease, and high salinities may interact to cause mangrove loss using both field and lab experiments. During my first survey of the die-off area, I noticed severe leaf damage which led to my first question, does grazing contribute to mangrove die-off? To answer this question, I set up a field experiment to exclude grazers like the robust bush cricket from individual mangrove trees. After one and a half years, I found no difference in trees that were left available to grazers versus trees that were protected from grazers, suggesting that grazers alone are not causing this mangrove die-off. Interestingly, I still noticed leaves that appeared to be grazed but also had lesions on them, which led to the next question. Does plant disease contribute to die-off? To answer this question, I surveyed mangroves across the island to determine disease incidence while also collecting disease leaves to identify the plant pathogen. Using DNA sequencing and morphology, I identified a genus of fungi known as Pestilodiopsis as the pathogen of interest. We have established that grazing is present in the die-off area with little effect alone, and we know that there's a fungal pathogen present. The next step was to test whether there could be an interaction between grazing and disease. To do this, I set up an experiment in which I simulated grazing in the field and recorded the development of lesions over a month. From this experiment, I found that grazed leaves had a higher proportion of leaf area covered by lesions than ungrazed leaves, suggesting that there could be an interaction between grazing and disease in the die-off area. So, we know that disease and grazing interact and suspect that another factor, salinity, will also have an interaction. But why does all this matter? Understanding whether these factors interact to produce stronger effects on mangrove die-off than any one factor will enhance our understanding of mangrove ecosystems and provide better insight into drivers of mangrove loss. This is increasingly important as climate change progresses. The predicted increase in storm events and their intensities, changes in precipitation patterns, and sea level rise will subject mangrove forests to even more stressors that will likely interact.